I guess this one's shot. I'm Tony Fast, and my family's been blessed to be able to farm in Montana for over 100 years now. A lot has changed in those 100 years, and it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lucy! Hands got cut, otherwise I would have pet her. I'm gonna go get the drill fired up, move it out of the way so Dad can spray this field edge where it's parked right now. Hey, we just made the first round around the field. Everything seems to be working good. Just finishing up this first 60 acre field. Uh, we got like a dozen blockage monitors that are not working. Products going through them, but they're not working, so we're gonna replace those. Garbage. Don't buy egg trap blockage monitors. Also, time to fill up again. We only put enough in to get started and make sure everything's working. So far, everything looks good. We'll get the trucks going here and uh, fill the drill again. So we got the 70 foot all ready to go. We gotta fill both drills at the same time here. All right, both drills are loaded. Got a little hectic there for a while. Left my camera on the drill frame. I'm gonna get Seth loaded on the monitor on the 70 foot drill. We'll get the outside round started and get Colin going on this drill. All right, I've got my prescriptions loaded. I've got my field set up. I need to just get my calibration numbers for my products I have in there. So I'm gonna use my Seedmaster app and figure out a base starting calibration and then as we're proceeding every tank on the drill has a scale on it and I can do an auto calibration I'll make my first round and I'll check my calibrations really cool pretty cool technology so I uh, just go into calibration to tell them which crop I'm wanting to plant Platin Durham, a meter type is on a Nova 360 part, 70 foot drill, 3.796 pounds per revolution. That's my starting calibration. We've got RTK, we've got prescription map, we got everything ready to go. We're going to get you a dry tractor. Next to the county road, south of the shop, we're going to look at it all year. You ready to go? Yep. <laughs> Good luck, Colin. But well, we just changed like 16 blockage monitors on this one. Oh, Eggtron. Well, we made it the first round around this field. We had a few of these hoses down here that come from our onboard on our seed that plugged off. So we have to take the air hose. We got too much seed in them, too far to push them, too low a fan rate. We got to use the air hose to push those out, to clean them out, and then we're ready to go back seeding again. Also a few chunks that got down into our seed cups on like three other runs, right? Right, I noticed at the end of the field here, and we had to pull those out as well. Clean those out. It's probably just a chunk block in the hole. And there's a couple of chunks of metal scaly rust out of our conveyor that's getting down in there.
that fan speed is such a fine line because you don't want to blow that seed out of the trench and have it end up on top of the ground. But you also don't want it fucking hoses. So up my fan speed a little bit. I think we're good now. Shutting down for the night and it's starting to sprinkle a little bit even. I'll take it. Can't forget the coffee cup. Chicks are sure growing. I think they're just over two weeks old now. Morning windmill. Well yesterday the day kind of got away from me. Uh, we did end up getting a couple hundred acres seeded with the big drill, 80 foot drill, and about 120 ish acres um, on the 70 foot. Those seed sensors, the blockage sensors on the both drills, changing those out took some time and just figuring everything out. Um, yeah, it just was, wasn't a super productive first day, but we got a fair amount done. So we're going to get the strut going, we're going to start treating seeds. And as you can see, our sprinkles really didn't amount to much last night. Oil level's good, but I had to add some coolant into the secondary coolant system. Yeah, emissions system has a cooling system because it has to get the exhaust cooled down somehow. So that's not good. I think we're burning a little bit of coolant because there's a little slight haze coming out of the exhaust pipe once in a while when it's idling. So. Yesterday we had some trouble with our calibration numbers. Um, the recommended starting number for Seedmaster from Seedmaster for the Durham is like 2.6 pounds per revolution on an 80 foot drill. I started there and it seemed like it was fine, but I kept on wanting to climb up. I got all the way up to 3.7, no 3.4 I think, pounds per revolution. So I'm gonna do the old fashioned catch test our auto cows have been really accurate in the past. The scales are accurate. It figures out how many revolutions, how many pounds came off. It gives you a new calibration number and you continue on. But for whatever reason now, it's not matching up. The thousand kernel weight on our derm is around like 38 kernels, 38 grams per thousand kernels. So if I look at what they recommend the average window for derm is 41 to 45 grams for a thousand kernels. So our seeds light, maybe that's thrown it off. I don't know. So the only way to really verify it is to catch some out of the meter uh, with a bucket. I'll show you guys how that all works. 
and weigh it and then throw that calibration in, do it the old fashioned way. Now the seed was going down faster than it should have been. So I tend to believe that that auto cal is right. The seed is going quicker, the higher the calibration number, the more pounds it's putting on. So we we're putting on more pounds. So I wanted to raise that calibration number. My money is on the, cal the auto cal is right, but it's kind of a risky, expensive mistake if it's not. All right, we got 24.6 pounds. We got to weigh the bucket yet and subtract that weight out and then throw that number into our little remote view deal here. And that'll spit out our calibration number. Well, that gave me a cal weight of 3.91 pounds per revolution. That is up there. I'm gonna do it again, just to see. Well, that second test came out 3.88. That's really close to 3.91. So we're gonna run with that, see how it goes today. Oh well, I don't know where it went. So I just finished that block back there. It's a 400 acre taker by plus, plus or minus. That's what I'm looking for, acres. That's done. I'm gonna jump over on this field next. Now I'm gonna go fill up seed fertilizer. Day two seating summary, Patron blockage monitors, still screwing up. We're gonna put seed from the seed truck on here so we can treat seed in the morning. Just quit talking. Morning, windmill. Cheers. Thank you. I don't know what it said this time, but thank you.
That'll work. Fuel gauge says about a third. Oil's good. Got started seeding, made about a round, and nuisance rains. Not enough to make a difference, but enough to stop us. Showers have pretty much cleared off here from the west, so little sprinkles on the window yet to dry. Uh, fertilizer and rain do not mix well when you're seeding. Uh, the moisture out of the air, as well as the rain that gets sucked into the fan, can cause buildup on the meters. High humidity and stuff just creates a lot of problems with uh, the dry fertilizer product trying to go through the hoses. Hopefully we didn't suck in too much moisture uh, while it was starting to sprinkle and I'll let the fans run here now for a while and try and dry everything out. We'll be going here momentarily. Sun's out. Fans have been running for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. I think we can go seeding again. Rain's starting to move in, sprinkling, and uh, we're gonna build some seed while it's still dry enough. Well, we got the seed loaded in the cart or on the onboard, that the big yellow box back there. It's full of seed. And it's raining enough that we can't see anymore for a while, if not at all today. When we were putting the conveyor away, the switch stuck, dumped the short out in the control, and pushed the conveyor against the seed, or the fertilizer tank. Luckily, it, I think it bypassed, and didn't wreck anything besides put a dent in the conveyor, so we gotta go figure out the electrical. I'm gonna have to take the air drill back to the shop because we're still at home. Nice thing about starting seeding at home. Right there. That dent was not there. That hit in front of the tank up there while it was, we we're done loading, it wouldn't shut off. I think what happened is these wires here got smashed and shorted out. Upon further review, the valves have power and the switches create a ground. These wires here got smashed against that, creating a closed circuit, creating a ground to the valve, and that's what moves the conveyor. Fix these all up here and I think we can get it working. This red hose, we also had added. Colin put that on there. That runs all the way up into the cab of the tractor so that I can pull fresh clean air into the compressor and not have that fill up with dirt and wreck the compressor. I guess this one's shot. <laughs> <laughs> Watch where you're kicking me. <laughs> <laughs> Colin just climbed in it and your dad started pushing. I'm like, that didn't hurt. Oh, that was fun. 